If you don't believe me that gravity is considered to be the lead in science, just go to Google and type in, is gravity a force? You'll get a variety of answers and you, you can read them all yourself. I'm not going to present them all. You can do it yourself to try and debunk me and then you'll realize that gravity is not a force. Well, hi, everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I started this video off a little bit differently than I normally do. I started it off with a segment from this presentation that we're doing on Sleeping Warrior and his argument against reality. In the opening segment, Sleeping Warrior suggested that you do a Google search to back him up. He didn't want to present it himself. He wanted you to do it. And he even gave you the search term. He specifically said, do a search for gravity is not a force. And I think that that is very telling of his research abilities. He's not asking a generic question to actually learn about gravity, such as, what is gravity? What is Einsteinian gravity? What is Newtonian gravity? He looked for a specific key phrase that was in line with his narrative. And then what he'll do is he'll come up with a number of different citations. He'll do a keyword search again to find where gravity is not a force is stated in the document. And then he will read that sentence. He will not read the entire document. He will not understand the document. He will point out the fact that at one sentence in one paragraph, that document says gravity is not a force. So... Let's go ahead and continue our series, Sleeping Warrior v. Reality, The Battle of Definitions. This top citation from Cornell said that Einstein said there is no such thing as a gravitational force. Mass is not attracting mass over a distance. Instead, it's curving space-time. In the context of the atmosphere, that adds nothing to the atmosphere argument. Well, let's take a moment and actually have a look at that citation from Cornell that he just used. Now, that citation was the response to a question, and here is the actual question. Einstein said there's no such thing as gravitational force. Mass is not attracting mass over a distance. Instead, it's curving space-time. If there is no force, then how do you explain acceleration due to gravity? Objects should only accelerate when acted upon by a force. Otherwise, they should maintain a constant velocity. Is this not the very heart of Sleeping Warrior's argument against atmosphere being held to the Earth by gravity? Is this not relevant? But did he talk about it? No. Let's look down further in this same article. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put a link to this article in the description of this video. And it's definitely worth a read. It's rather advanced, and it talks about space-time and how space-time can create an acceleration. But let's go ahead and go over it real quick. Basically, what it talks about is describing the warping of space-time as creating a downward slope that objects fall. The steeper that downward slope, the faster the objects fall. Now, that can be the same thing as what happens when you accelerate an object. Now, this actually acts very much like Newtonian motion. However, there are two exceptions. One is that you, if you have objects that are moving at very close to the speed of light, the differences between space-time and Newtonian physics becomes important. The second is if you have very massive gravitational fields then the difference between Newtonian physics and re general relativity become important. However, the final paragraph is very telling. Let me put that up on the screen. Now, here's the source of confusion for Sleeping Warrior. He's already been through the George Mooser, gravity isn't a force, but it acts like a force. Here, they say it again. So, to summarize, general relativity says that matter bends space-time. And the effect of bending that space-time is to create a generalized kind of force that acts on objects. However, this is not a force as such that acts on the objects, but rather just an object following its geodesic path through space-time. It is not a force. No one has ever said that it is a force. It is objects following their path through space-time. And by following that path, it acts as if there is a force acting on it. So to say that space-time and Einsteinian gravity is not a force, so therefore you can't use the force of gravity to hold the atmosphere onto the planet, is simply disproven by your own citation, Sleeping Warrior. 
You should read it next time. This is the one that uh, Quantum Eraser gets misrepresented by Blue Marble Science on. It might not be him, actually. Don't quote me on that. I stand corrected. I can't remember who it is. Somebody says that uh, Quantum Eraser has misrepresented this citation, how we know gravity is not just a force. Well, if you actually look at what Quantum Eraser actually said and then reference the bit that he actually said, he hasn't misrepresented it. The ballers are just lying about him because they need to discredit him at all costs because he's got an absolute killer argument against the ball having an atmosphere next to the vacuum of space. Now, this is where Quantum Eraser misrepresented this article. And I called him on it in another video, and I'll put a link to that video so you can see it for yourself. The title of the article was not Gravity is Not a Force. The title of the article was Gravity is Not Just a Force. Because the entire article was about the concept of general relativity of which gravitational force is only a small part of it. General relativity describes the interaction of mass throughout the universe. Gravitational force is a manifestation of that generalized relativity in our world. Now, let's see what they say. But we now understand that gravity as a force is only part of a more complex phenomenon described as the theory of general relativity. To take that to mean that it disproves that gravitational force exists is a very superficial understanding of what general relativity is. General relativity is an all-encompassing theory of which gravitational force in our world is a very tiny part or a manifestation of. Let's put this in another way that may be more understandable to the parties involved. In order to work as an attorney, you have to pass the bar exam. That's kind of like Newtonian gravity passing the bar exam. However, Einsteinian gravity says there's much more to it than just passing the bar exam. You need to pay attention and do well in law school and absorb the material so you have the tools to be able to pass the bar exam and practice as an attorney instead of driving a minivan. There isn't any gravity being a force citations because gravity is not a force. Albert Einstein's the current science and he says it's not a force. If you want to think of it as a force as per George Musa and fight the flat earth you can be a moron and think of it as a force. Don't, don't make it a force though does it? Einsteinian gravity is the current science on gravitational theory. This is another one of Quantum Eraser's uh, citations that he used to try and prove his gravity is not a force nonsense. Now, this specifically talks about universal gravitation and relativity. And it does the two things that we've talked about already, repeatedly. General relativity is more accurate when you're dealing with massive objects like black holes and things going close to the speed of light. But the third paragraph is very telling. For most applications, though, gravity is best explained by Newton's law of universal gravitation, which states that gravity exists as an attraction between two bodies. The strength of this attraction can be calculated mathematically, where the attraction force is directly proportioned to the product of their masses and inversely proportioned to the square of the distance between them. What this talks about is that gravity clearly acts as a force on objects in our world. That includes our atmosphere. So when we talk about the force of gravity acting on the atmosphere, we're talking about this. The atmosphere is not moving close to the speed of light, and it's not as massive as a black hole. It acts as if a force of gravity is acting upon it. Anybody that tells you that gas pressure can exist with a gradient next to a vacuum is denying the fact that it's an instantaneous transfer of energy. The balloon does not burst slowly. The balloon bursts immediately on this debunks their claim. You see, this is the thing that absolutely amazes me about Sleeping Warrior's argument. He's arguing that an atmospheric pressure gradient cannot exist, yet we measure an atmospheric pressure gradient. There is not a question that there is an atmospheric pressure gradient. His argument is completely moot. I don't agree with Albert Einstein. It's a mathematical construct that's got no experimentation um, applicability whatsoever. You can't do it with experiment. You can't test it. Bendy space-time. What, what, what does it even mean? We know what it means. We know what they tell us it means. It's the fabric of space-time. We can't test it. 
It's a theoretical construct that exists only in mathematics. Now we're actually getting to the thrust of Anthony's argument. Let's just review briefly what he said. Okay, first of all, Einstein is the current science, and it has, quote unquote, replaced Newton. So therefore, Newton is no longer in existence and we can't use it. Now he's saying that Einstein is purely a mathematical construct, so therefore we can't use it. So since Einstein got rid of Newton and Anthony Riley just declared Einstein invalid, there is no gravity. Case closed, right? Right? I don't think so. You know, as fun as this is and the circular as this reasoning is, it gets even better. First of all, his assertion that there is no experimental evidence for Einstein is easily refutable. In 1919, Eddington measured the light coming off of stars behind a solar eclipse. The distortion of those stars matched Einstein's equation and confirmed them exactly. LIGO has detected gravitational waves as predicted by Einsteinian relativity. We just took a picture of a black hole as predicted by Einstein. GPS satellites use general relativity, tune their signals so that we get accurate readings on Earth. This is easily refutable. But rather than me refute it, I think I'm going to let Sleeping Warrior go ahead and refute his own argument that Einstein replaced Newton. No one must think that Newton's great creation can be overthrown in any real sense by this or by any other theory. His clear and wide ideas will forever retain their significance as the foundation on which our modern its conceptions of physics have been built. You know, Sleeping Warrior, it's really no fun if you spend all this time making this manifestly absurd argument of yours and then turn around and debunk it yourself. What am I going to do? That was my job. So long as we're talking about gravity, it reaffirms the position that gravity is a thing. But Newton said you need a force to stop the atmosphere bursting into space, whereas Albert Einstein said, gravity's not a force. Now here's a problem that Sleeping Warrior has. He has these definitions set up in his head according to his own reasoning and expects the rest of us to follow along. His entire argument here is depending on whether or not gravity is a force under Einstein, and then he flips over to Newton, changing directions and says that in order for the atmosphere to be held to the Earth, a force must be involved. And since Einsteinian gravity is not a force, we can't apply that to the Newtonian definition of the first law of motion. Are you with me so far? So if one says you need a force to stop the atmosphere bursting into space, but the other one says it's not a force, what are we left with other than obfuscation? Well, let's see if we can kind of unpack this a little bit. Newton's first law of motion says that an object in motion will remain in motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. I'm paraphrasing that, of course. And then it says that gravity is that force that would hold the atmosphere onto the surface of the Earth. That's the implication. Einsteinian gravity says that gravity is not a force, but a distortion of space-time. And that distortion of space-time would cause the atmosphere to fall back geodesically onto the surface of the Earth. The effect is exactly the same. But what Sleeping Warrior is trying to do is say that you're going to accept my definition because I know that I'm right and you don't know what you're talking about because I know this better than you do, Your Honor. And he's applying the definition from Newtonian gravity to Einsteinian gravity and vice versa, trying to confuse the two. The bottom line is they're both talking about the same effect. Gravity is what holds the atmosphere onto the Earth. Newton looked at it one way. Einstein looked at it another way. You know, Sleeping Warrior, nobody is going to believe an argument that you don't need a commercial driver's license because you're transporting your cell phone, and that is business equipment. They're going to call it manifestly absurd. Now, the same thing goes with your argument that the atmosphere can't be held onto the Earth because gravity is not a force. Let me see if I can clarify the distinction for you here. This is a single piece of paper with a pencil drawing or a charcoal drawing on it. It's one object, just like gravity is one thing. 
Now, is this an old woman or is it a young woman looking away? It's two different ways of looking at exactly the same object. And as far as your argument of trying to use an Einsteinian bending of space-time to meet a definition under Newtonian motion, it is akin to holding an old woman to a young woman's standard of dress and vice versa. It just doesn't make any sense. They're different frames of reference. They're different points of view. So the bottom line is sleeping warrior, you are overruled. The court finds against you because your argument is manifestly absurd. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Take a second, hit that like and subscribe button and join our merry band. I'll be seeing you again soon. Take care guys.